Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Percy News Channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that probably sounds familiar to many of us, uh, but at least in my case, I don't know exactly the definition of, of, of this, and also which could be the relationship with, uh, with the production of cattle. I'm talking about big data. Um, so today, our guest is a specialist in big data. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, um, thank you for accepting our invitation. Guillermo Rosa, uh, he has a degree in animal science and a PhD in statistics in Sao Paulo State University. After that, he moved to the United States as a professor of the Michigan State University. And currently, he works, works as a professor at the Department of Animal Science and Data Science at Wisconsin Medicine University. Is that all right? Yes. We, would you like to add something else? No, that's it. That's okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Professor, first question would be, could you give us like a um, general definition of what is big data? Because most of us, I guess, we have heard about that. But I don't know if we, if we could give a definition of that. What yeah. is big data? Yeah. Thanks, Facundo, for, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, there is not a, a clear definition. And, and so, the, as the name says, big data, it, it, we are talking about large amounts of data, for sure. But when we, 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 we specifically say about big data, it's not only uh, the size of the, the, the database, it's uh, the, the diversity, like you, you are merging data from different sources, so, uh, uh, and the data come in different structures. You may have a, a worksheet coming in an Excel uh, format. You have maybe images coming from satellites or from cameras. You may have uh, other sensors that you use in animals. So you need to merge this, this kind of data and we bring data from public available data sets like weather information, uh, economic data. So it's, it's all this. So people try to define big data using the, the Vs, sometimes four Vs, like volume in terms of the, uh, the amount, the velocity, so data coming in uh, on a daily basis, for example, uh, and veracity, so trustful data. So there are many, many Vs that uh, they, they try to, to attach to this uh, definition. But that's the, the idea. So it's, it's a large amount of data coming from different sources, and the most important thing is what we do with this. We try to, to mine and learn from, from these uh, data sets. Perfect. That makes me feel better because the, the general definition is like didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Professor, in your career, you have been involved in, in many projects that relate uh, big data with many kinds of cattle production. Yeah. Could you give us an example of how uh, big data could improve our production in, in, in cattle, yeah. and especially if it's possible, if you have an example of poor production. Oh yes, nice. Yes. No, actually we work uh, across species. Uh, mostly the, the, the projects that we are involved with are mostly with beef and, da and dairy cattle, pigs and poultry. We have something with fish and other species, but so we have a, a large uh, projects involving big data with beef cattle, dairy cattle, and pigs. And for example, things that we are doing in, in beef cattle is to combine information that we gather from the farms in terms of uh, herd size, the breeds that they use, management protocols in terms, of, in terms of nutrition, vaccination, and so forth. And then we combine this data with weather data satellite information, for example, we, we can estimate the, the, the vegetation forage quality and, and, and ab abundance using uh, satellite image. So we have the vegetation indexes that we, we, we calculate. So we merge all this data and we try to do mostly two things. One is to predict outcome. So based on previous experience, so we use data from previous years. So we know how weather affected the production, how management affected production. So for any specific farm, 
based on the breed that they use, the, the management protocol, uh, uh, and, and weather forecast, we can predict production there. Not only amount, but the quality, the carcass traits, for example, carcass quality. So that's one thing, to predict, uh, our, uh, forecast uh, future production. And the other thing that is very important is analyze this big data. We learn about factors that affect the production. So we know things that can improve, can be improved. And that's, uh, uh, I think, the most important thing is that we can make specific interventions to improve the system. So it could be different diet, management of pasture, uh, different cross of breeds and so forth, okay? So, but, so there are three, three components. So one is getting the data. So getting data, data from different sources and combining. I was this, gonna ask you about that. Yeah, this <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> that's a big task. Yeah. The second is the data mining. So depending on the goal that you have in terms of prediction or, or understanding causal relationships. So you have the data mining approach. And then the third one is how to use this, right? So you need to uh, make decisions based on, on the results of the, the, the data analysis. I guess to collect all this uh, huge amount of information cannot be done with paper like this and yeah. pencil. So uh, I read um, people who work in this area, they're using like new technologies, like new sensors um, to collect all, and make this, this first task of collecting the information uh, a little bit easier. So what kind of, of tools do you have uh, available today to, to be able to collect all this kind of information yeah. in a way which is not like very, uh, let's say manually. Uh, yeah, well, we actually have still things that come in pieces of paper and we need to digitalize and, and combine with other things. But quite often we start with the, with the software that the farms use, the management like in farm software. So we get this data, but quite often we need to complement this with information that is not available in the software. For example, uh, facility, the description of equipment, uh, feeder, drinker, uh, how old is the facility, or how well or, or not well trained are the employees. So we run surveys as well. You may have sometimes surveys that they just fill on a piece of a paper. We make available also in the computer if they prefer go in, in the computer and typing in the, the answers or, or clicking. So, but that's that's one thing. I mean, we have uh, data coming f different different uh, formats. And then whenever possible, like you, are, you, you, you ask specifically about sensor. Uh, so we use, we try to automate as, as much as possible. So one way is to use sensor technology to get, to get information. So when you go to uh, thinking about animal behavior as an indication of animal well-being or welfare uh, or animal health. So that's very important. We can use cameras, for example, to, to identify animals and track animals. And, and you mean temperature cameras or what kind of cameras? Yeah, so there are many different cameras. Uh, Temperature is one for you to monitor, for example, uh, animal fever in animals, or people are now, this is more still uh, experimental, it's not a commercial application yet, but uh, looking at uh, how much heat an animal loses uh, and how this relates to feed efficiency, for example, right? How, so, so there are these cameras, the thermal, thermal cameras, uh, we use a lot the, the surveillance cameras, the simple, that we call RGB, the color, the ring, red, and blue. So we can, for example, in, depending on the, on, on the kind of the species and the, and the breed that you are using, you can even recognize animals, like with the coat colors, like in host and care, in dairy, for example, we can easily recognize and identify animals based on the coat color. Uh, and then we have the depth or 3D cameras. So these are very interesting technology that you, so instead of having colors, each pixel tells you the distance from the camera to the, the object. 
so you can, for example, uh, uh, get a sense of uh, size or volume of animal uh, and estimate the, the, the size, the, the body weight, for example, and body composition. So, Professor, all these technologies, uh, would you say that today there are already a farm using them or they are in a time of experimentation in universities before yes. they are going to be applied in the in their real world, yeah. let's say? In, in which stage? Uh, are they sensors and this? Um... Yeah, there are sensors, the, the wearable sensors that we call those that we attach to the animals. Some are very common already, and some are uh, common. So animal identification using electronic ear tag, RFID, for example, this is very common in, in, in many species in beef and dairy and, and pigs, for example. So you can identify an animal or cows are coming to be milked and you know which cow is coming and, and, and so forth. And, and, and maybe feed the, the, the specific amount for what, what she's producing, for example. So this is a, a technology that is available and used. In dairy cattle, for example, we use accelerometer. There is a wearable sensor with accelerometer to, to monitor movement. And this is related, so you can uh, detect uh, the, the right time to inseminate the cow. Uh, based so how, how does it work? Is it attached to the leg of the yes, animal? Yes, in the, the leg. So it sees uh, it the, the, the movement. The, the yes, oh, so great. it gives the, the movement in the three axes. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, so. Uh, and, and then there is a, the same thing for, as a collar. So you attach here yeah. to, to mostly to, to monitor rumination and feeding behavior and so forth. So these are sensors, like examples of sensors that are available already commercially, and you have companies that you can buy this kind of technology. The computer vision, as we call it, the use of cameras and the computer, the machine learning and algorithms that translate these pictures to or videos to whatever you are interested, uh, body weight or, or specific behaviors, for example, tail biting in pigs. This is not uh, commercially available yet. So, but well, yet, let's yeah, say yet. So there are a lot of research going on in, in, in research institutions, and there are startups uh, uh, making this available. Are they mainly in the United States or here as well in Europe? Yeah, I, I know in the US, uh, but I believe in, in Europe as well. Uh, there are many startups providing different. Uh, tools using cameras or other sensors for different uh, traits that you are interested in. So many of the, we, as, as any, uh, we know, startups, they, they launch the ideas, they try to sell, and then uh, some fail, but of course, some, some go forward. Okay, Professor, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Spain. I, have, I hope, we hope you have a good time here. And thank again to the audience for listening and watching.